You've probably already seen some crazy before and after results when it comes to reversal of hair loss. But you might still be wondering about how people actually grow new and more hairs. In this video, we are going to go over the fundamentals of hair regrowth. So if you are struggling with hair loss and want to accelerate your hair growth, this is the video for you. What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. This video is the third in a series of videos that will cover all you need to know about hair loss and how to deal with it. In this series, we'll go over the following subjects. Video one, this is an old video about how we actually lose hair. And if you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to go back and watch that video. Video two, how do we combat DHC? So this is also an old video. And if you haven't seen this, I will strongly encourage that you also go back and see that. And video three in this series, growth stimulants and how do we grow new hair? This is today's video. Then we have video four, inflammation and how to reduce it. And at last we have video five, different approaches and how to deal with the problem. In video five, we are going to take a look at how you can combine the knowledge from all the other four videos to take up the fight against your own hair loss. So if you haven't seen the first video where we cover the subject of why we're losing hair, and the second video that explains how you can stop hair loss, I suggest that you go and take a look at it before you watch this video. This series is created so that you will get all the information in the right order to understand how hair loss works and how to deal with it on a daily basis. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Philippe and I suffer from hair loss too. And these videos are just my contributions to whatever people is out there with hair loss problems so that they might find value and benefit from my experiments and my own experience as they fight their own battle against hair loss. So today's topic will be hair regrowth. So I decided to add caffeine and peppermint oil to this video since these two subjects have been asked for numerous times in the comment sections in some of the other videos. But first, let's start with minoxidil since it seems to be a very popular solution for a lot of people out there. So hair growth is a complex process that relies on several factors, including the anatomy of the hair, the presence of stem cells and the crucial role of capillary innovation. And if you don't know what that means, it simply means just the way that your body is supplying you with blood and nutrients. On top of that, we also have the three distinct phases of hair growth, namely the anagen, the catagen, and the telogen phase. Among the many factors influencing hair growth, one stands out, that is blood flow. So blood flow is essential for delivering nutrients and oxygens to the hair stem cell, which are responsible for the hair growth. This critical aspect of hair growth sheds light on various treatments aimed at preventing and reversing hair loss. And I know, Kevin from Hair Cafe makes a lot of jokes about this, but I would like to draw a bit on Dr. Huberman's videos, where he explains very simply put how blood supply is a determining factor in growth. Again, take from it whatever suits your plate. There are many accelerators on hair growth, but the first one that I really want to underscore is blood flow itself which equates to the delivery of nutrients and oxygen. This is very important and it explains a lot of the treatments for halting and reversing hair loss. For instance, One of the most well-established treatment for hair loss is minoxidil, often recognized under the brand name Rogaine. Interesting, minoxidil was initially developed as a medication for hypertension. This drug achieves blood pressure reduction by causing vasodilation thereby increasing blood flow. While this might be surprising, it is essential to understand that minoxidil's impact extends beyond the scalp, effectively slowing hair loss in various parts of the body. So how does minoxidil work its magic? It accomplishes this by prolonging the anagen phase of hair growth, which in essence extends the time that the hair will remain active in a growth phase. While minoxidil is effective at slowing hair loss in individuals experiencing early hair thinning or hair loss. It may not fully address the needs of those already experiencing significant hair loss. 
We know this from video 2, where I explained about antigen activity and minoxidil does not simply address the endocrine problem, but rather instead a problem of capillary innervation, aka blood flow. So understanding how minoxidil benefits you in your fight against hair loss, it is also crucial to cover potential side effects from this drug. One of the challenges associated with minoxidil use is its effect on blood pressure. Depending on individual sensitivity, it can either significantly lower blood pressure or have a milder impact. As a result, physicians often initiate treatment with a very low minoxidil dosage, incrementally just small adjustments to them to find the optimal effective dosage. This cautious approach helps prevent uncomfortable side effects, including ankle swelling, headaches, dizziness, and so on. But minoxidil actually also influences the hormone prolactin, and that is another thing to consider. Prolactin is produced by the pituitary gland, and it acts as a hormone and a neurotransmitter. Interestingly, it opposes dopamine, a neurochemical that plays a role in motivation, pursuit, and drive, and so on. These two hormones, dopamine and prolactin, actually operate in a push-pull fashion. Increasing prolactin level often results from high doses of minoxidil or heightened sensitivity to the drug can actually lead to a reduction in libido, overall well-being, and feeling of apathy. In extreme cases, it may even cause conditions like gynecomastia in men and the release of small amounts of milk in women. When it comes to minoxidil dosages, Precision is crucial. The range of recommended oral minoxidil dosages can vary significantly, spanning from 0.25 mg up to 5 mg per day. That is a 20-fold difference. Topical minoxidil, commonly available in a 5% concentration, is recommended for daily application on the scalp. However, it is essential to leave the minoxidil solution on the scalp for three to five minutes to ensure proper absorption into the follicles and the underlying stem cell niche. Finding the correct minoxidil dosage often involves a trial and error approach. In some cases, people discover the right dosage through unwanted side effects like dizziness and so on, as we just talked about, or the elevated prolactin levels. And ideally, you want to start at a lower dose so this is hence why some physicians prescribe 0.25 mg for oral minoxidil and incrementally increase to avoid discomfort or interruption in daily life. In summary, understanding the intricate relationship between blood flow, minoxidil and hair growth is definitely key to addressing hair loss. While minoxidil's role in hair restoration is evident, finding the ideal dosage and closely monitoring the side effects is crucial for a successful hair loss treatment journey. I strongly advise, especially if you take the oral minoxidil route, that you work with a healthcare professional since this can actually affect your life in various ways. So the thing where I see people are usually actually drinking minoxidil from the bottle because they can't give the prescription. That's a no-go. It's a really bad idea, guys. The next subject for today's video is microneedling. Microneedling, also known as percutaneous collagen induction therapy, involves the use of multiple fine needles to create micropunctures in the skin. So this treatment actually originated back in the 1990s, primarily to just treat skin and scar issues. Over the years, it has expanded its application, including into hair restoration. So microneedling has shown potential for promoting hair regrowth to two key mechanisms. Firstly, it increases the local concentration of growth factors in the treated area, so the scalp. This effect can actually be amplified when combining with minoxidil for a whooping 400% increased effect. Secondly, Minoxidil activates stem cells in the hair bulge area, stimulating hair growth and reducing hair thinning. Microneedling has been used to treat various types of hair loss, including androgen alopecia, that's male or female pattern hair loss, alopecia erythia, typically isolated bald spots, and telogen effluvium, which, which is hair shedding, which you also get from stopping minoxidil at some point. 
So it can be a standalone therapy or combined with other treatments such as minoxidil as I just said, or steroids, vitamins or even PRP. The delivery system for microneedling is essential. Derma rollers, which is commonly used, can sometimes cause hair breakage, while in contrast derma pens, which is used vertically, often offer a better position and are less likely to damage the hair and the skin. Therefore, derma pens are generally the preferred choice. And also, please remember to do this with caution, guys. I would advise myself with the following statement. When considering microneedling, it's crucial to determine the appropriate needle depth, frequency and depth selection. Starting with a shallow depth such as 0.5 mm is advisable and gradually increasing the depth as tolerated. Frequency typically range from weekly to eight weekly intervals with the optimal schedule depending on the specific needs and response of the individual. And for the side effects. Common side effects include itching, temporary redness, I think it's called arrhythmia, and potential hair shedding in the initial phases. Infections and allergic reactions from local anesthesia, if you use that, I wouldn't recommend it, are possible risks. Although these are minimized when the procedure is done under medical supervision. There's also a risk of scarring if done incorrectly, emphasizing once again the importance of proper technique. If you want to know more about microneedling, I have a few videos about the subject that I would encourage guys to see before they even start that adventure. But if you are considering microneedling at home, the following guidelines can help ensure safe and effective results. One, use a derma pen for precise vertical stamping. Two, clean the scalp before you do the microneedling. Three, start with a shallow depth and 0.5 millimeters actually work. There's studies behind this, so that's what I would suggest. Begin with a single application and increase the numbers as it is tolerated. Never start out wild and just go nuts with it. Five, initiate with monthly treatments, gradually shortening the intervals. And six, always monitor your progress and consult a medical professional for guidance. In conclusion, Microneedling can be a valuable tool for hair restoration with proper technique and it has also been shown to promote hair regrowth and improve the thickness and quality of existing hair. However, it is essential to exercise caution and follow the recommended guidelines and consult with a healthcare provider, especially when dealing with some home application microneedling as some of you probably already are doing. Your hair's health and safety and your own should always be the top priority. The next subject is highly asked for in the comment section, so I thought it would be of importance to actually give a detailed explanation. Caffeine. So caffeine can be utilized in several ways to address hair loss. The first one is the additive for medication. Some medications formulated for hair loss treatments like finasteride or minoxidil are actually compounded with caffeine. This addition has two potential benefits. Firstly, caffeine is actually believed to enhance the penetration of the medication through the scalp, aiding in absorption into the capillary bed. Secondly, caffeine actually acts as a vasodilator, promoting an increased blood flow to the targeted area, which can stimulate new hair growth. The improved circulation is somewhat an analog to how minoxidil functions, as we learned earlier about in this video. Vasodilation and stimulation. Caffeine, as mentioned earlier, is a vasodilator, which means it widens the blood vessels and improves the blood flow. This increased blood flow can provide vital nutrients and oxygen to the hair follicles creating a more conductive environment for hair growth. As we just covered earlier in this video, blood flow is a thing you should be concerned about if you are losing hair. And once again, caffeine is a great add-on for this matter. Simply put, DHT blocking. Dihydrotestosterone, also known as DHT, is a hormone known to contribute to hair loss, particularly in men with male pattern baldness. And if you watch the first videos of this series, you know exactly what I'm talking about. 
If you haven't seen that video, I strongly suggest that you go and take a look at the playlist I call Ultimate Hair Loss Guide and watch from video one. So caffeine has the unique capability to actually block DHT directly, potentially preventing hair loss. This is different from finasteride, which inhibits the enzyme to lower DHT levels and pretty similar to IU58841, though much weaker. Application of caffeine. When it comes to caffeine's role in hair loss treatment, topical application is the key. Applying caffeine directly to the scalp has shown promising results. It is important to note that drinking or in digesting caffeine in any other way or caffeinated beverages doesn't seem to have any effect. And what does the research say on this matter? While caffeine's impact on hair loss is intriguing, it's essential to recognize that more research is needed to fully understand its potential. Topical caffeine application has demonstrated positive effects in some studies and its mechanisms of action, such as vasodilatation and DHT blocking, offer a plausible explanation for these outcomes. However, the compound isn't as extensively studied as some other hair loss treatments, so caffeine may not be a miracle cure for hair loss, but it is a stimulating and multifaceted addition to the range of treatments available. Incorporating caffeine into your hair care routine through something as a shampoo or conditioner is definitely the way forward. And last subject of the day, we have peppermint oil. And the reason why I put this last is that honestly, I don't really see its place in hair loss community at this point. So studies show that peppermint oil is comparable to minoxidil, but we already know that caffeine has that exact same property. Also, peppermint oil does not block any kind of DHC from the scalp area, and caffeine does that, so caffeine is up by one compared to the peppermint oil on this. Peppermint oil does seem to have vasodilatory properties, just like caffeine. And my last point, studies on peppermint oil are very scarce and does not seem to have a highly qualitative method set up for the study. So my verdict on peppermint oil would be, does it work? Definitely. Do we know how well it works? Kinda yes, we need more and better studies to know this. Can it be replaced by caffeine? Yes. Would I like to add this to a shampoo or conditioner that already contains caffeine? Yes. But for anything else than an add-on to a shampoo or conditioner that's already containing caffeine, I don't really see any other uses for it, unfortunately. And this concludes the third video in the series, The Ultimate Hair Loss Guide. In the next video, we will cover the topic, inflammation and how to reduce it. So guys, that is all I have for you today and I have nothing left to say except that I hope I see you in the next video.